Hi, it's Marvin McKenzie. I'm the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Puyallup, Washington, and I uh, wanted to spend a couple of minutes here uh, giving you my daily visit with the Lord. Uh, every single day of the week, I take time, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year, I take time to visit with God. I, Because I'm a pastor and because of uh, the privileges that I have as a pastor, I spend about two hours in my devotional time and my walk with God, my visit with, with the Lord. And um, my visit will include a couple of uh, about a couple of um, couple three elements. Number one, I'll take uh, some time and read the Word of God. And so I usually, just generally speaking, as there can be changes. This can be different from day to day. But generally speaking, I'll read uh, two chapters of the Old Testament, one chapter of the New Testament uh, every single day. Um, and then after that, I take some time in prayer and uh, just spend some time in prayer. While I'm reading the Word of God, by the way, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm reading the Word of God is I'm asking the Holy Spirit of God to direct me to a thought, something that I can meditate upon, something that I can think upon, and use it, use it for the day in my, in my personal devotions, my personal walk with the Lord during that day. And, uh, and so then what I'll do is after I've had my time of reading the Bible and I've spent some time in prayer, then I'll take that, that particular passage that I, that I set aside and I will begin, um, to study it out, uh, more thoroughly, more carefully for uh, myself, um, or more carefully. And then I'll also take some time uh, during the day, because as a part of my visit, my walk with the Lord, I want to take some time and I, I usually try to plan some kind of outreach, some way that I'm going to try to either send a note, to send an email, uh, send a text message, uh, make a phone call to somebody, just to try to reach out to someone. And then I also want to take some time and look and see what God has done, how God has blessed me. And so I'll look for maybe a person who sent me a note or an email or a text and just thank God for something like that. And uh, as I take my time to spend with the Lord and my visit with God each day. So today in my in my daily visit with the Lord, I, I was reading out of uh, 1 Samuel chapters 13, chapter 13 and 14, also Matthew chapter 1. But the passage that kind of struck me, stuck out to me today is 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 3 through 4. The Bible says this, And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in, the, in Geba, and the Philistines heard of it, and Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten the garrison of the Philistines and that Israel was had an abomination with the Philistines and the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal. I got to thinking about this passage of scripture. You know, we in the United States and, and this, this circumstance, um, and we in the United States, we live under such, such blessings. You know, in ancient Grecian society, every man was a soldier. Uh, it was... It was how you protected your land and your family. It was also how you advanced your community uh, as in, in, in battle situations. It was what you did, and uh, it wasn't optional. If you were, if you were a male uh, and you were healthy, you were a soldier. It wasn't a draft. It wasn't a lottery. It wasn't one of those things that uh, if you were pursuing a particular kind of education, then you could be out of the military. You didn't have to worry about battle. If you were a male in Greek society, ancient Greek society, if you were a male and you were healthy, you were a soldier. And, um, and, and you were expected that you would be a soldier and you could expect that you'd be in, in combat, that you'd be in battle. It was just going to happen. There were no two ways around it. It was going to happen uh, because of the culture, because of the society. You were going to be in combat. You were either going to be in combat protecting your property, your land, your city, and your uh, society from, uh, from an, uh, an advancing uh, army. And, and very often it would be another Greek city. Uh, so there's another Greek city down the road, and it wants to it wants to become more prosperous. It wants more land. Land is how you pro prospered in those days. It wants to be more prosperous. It wants more land, and so it would attack a sister city so that they could take over that land and that property. And it may be that you're protecting yourself uh, uh, from from uh, you're from an advancing army. But if it wasn't that you're protecting yourself from advancing army, then your city was out because it wants to prosper too. And so you're going somewhere uh, to try to conquer some other city and conquer someone else's land. And so you could guarantee that you'd be, a, if you were male and healthy, you could guarantee that you're going to be a soldier and you could guarantee that you were going to be in battle. It was just the way it was. Uh, ancient Israel um, wasn't technically a warlike culture in the same sense that Greece was. Um, but it was still similar, at least from the, the standpoint of 
the obligations and the responsibilities of, of, of every man. There were enemies. Israel had enemies, and, uh, and there was no choice but to fight those enemies. You're not going to get around to there. It has to be done. No choice but to fight those enemies. And so in this case, Jonathan, has, who is uh, Saul's son, he has, been in com uh, he has been in combat, and he has smitten the garrison of the Philistines, and, um, and now uh, uh, is Israel uh, expects reprisals. Israel expects there's going to be some challenges to this thing. And, uh, and so Saul calls to all of Israel and says, uh, you know, that, that we're had in abomination of the Philistines. And, and at this point, Israel knows, every man knows, uh, he's going to have to be in a combat situation. They have to be, be, be ready for battle. And wives and, and girlfriends might uh, weep, but none of them can beg their man, any man to stay home um, in, under these circumstances. Mothers might fret for their sons, but, uh, but they never would have and never could have asked them to stay away from the battlefield. A dad might have feared for his life and wondered who would care for his family if, if he died in combat. Um, a, a young man uh, may wonder if he dies, you know, what might have his life been had he not had to enter into the battlefield, but none of them were looking to flee to another country and find amnesty. There's nothing like that available for them. There, there's no place, safe place that they could have could have gone any, anyway. Uh, age was no excuse. Position was no excuse. Wealth would not help. Influence was not going to remove the obligation. It was, gonna, it was this die or die fighting. There were no options here. They're going to have to defend themselves. They're going to have to defend their land and their people and their country. It's just the way it's going to be, and, and they're not going to get around it. You know, um, in our current situation here in the United States of America with a military that's made up of, uh, of volunteers who fight and who sacrifice and very often die in our place, um, we ought to be very thankful. Uh, more than just being thankful, we ought to be actively thankful. I want to encourage you to do something um, to be a blessing to those who have um, voluntarily taken upon themselves the responsibility of protecting you and me so that we don't have to worry about die or die fighting. We ought to thank, be thankful for those people. Thankful for God, to God for our country, but thankful for those um, that gives so very much so that we can be safe.